There we are. We think we've got some better signal here, everybody. Fergus, I'm not sure if you noticed this, but there's a lioness sitting about two meters from us. Mm. Have you noticed her? There she is. She doesn't look very full, I must say. I wonder if they didn't have a fight with the hyenas and perhaps lose what remained of their buffalo kill. Yeah, they are just reaffirming their bonds. Every time I move the car, I seem to get into the exact position that is incorrect, the position behind which they are going to sneak so that we are behind a bush, which I've done yet again. Let me reverse. Just very slightly. There we go. <laughs> Marco, you want to know how fast a lion cub grows in comparison with a leopard cub? Well, I think probably at exactly the same rate, just about. I mean, remember, they go independent at round about, or become sexually mature at around about the same age. And so, you know, in theory, the males are able to breed from sort of age three and a half to four. They don't until they're about six. That's the same for male, lions and leopards. For the lion females, they are in theory sexually mature or ready to mate by the time they are two and a half to three. That's the same with leopards. So the m maturing rate, I would imagine, is almost exactly the same. There's still some quite fun playing going on here now. <laughs> Cat, do you say what is the average size of a pride of lions in this area? Cat, the average Kruger size of lions is between three and five females and their related offspring. But sometimes it can be up to 30 in a pride. Uh, that is very unusual and often, uh, however, I think sort of three or four females and their youngsters is what you'd expect to find here in the Kruger region. They're having a wonderful time through there. I know it's not the best picture. I can't get through there though, everyone. <laughs> That's turning a little bit angry. You can see the ears flattened against the head, maybe. <laughs> Yuki, you say they're okay with people so close. Yuki, you can be rest assured that I have absolutely no desire um, to put myself at risk. Yeah, Fergus I'm not that concerned about, obviously, but myself I am very concerned about, and I would not be this close to them if I thought for one second that there was any danger at all. I'm not in the business of extreme sports, and Yuki, I know it seems just outlandish that we should be able to sit so close to something so uh, sort of, in theory, terrifying, but... Actually, it's fine, and it's fine simply because they've become totally used to us. And you'll find that lions become very used to human beings, largely because they are so confident. They are the apex predator. Now, Mika, you're eight years old and you want to know if all the cubs are the same age. Mika, they're not the same age. One of them was born in July last year. I think the... Then two, I think, were born in May. And the others were born in June. And there are six cubs here. So I think I've got it right by saying two in May, three in June, and one of them in July of 2016. So they're not quite the same age. There's about to be some action here to the left, Ferg. This one here is looking like it might leap at its brother or sister. There's one male, and the rest are all females.
Now, Albie, you're from, uh, well, so you're from South Africa, and you say, when are these cubs going to begin hunting with the rest of the pride? 18 months is round about when they become useful as hunting pride members. Before that, they are just a hindrance. And so Albie in Cape Town, these guys have probably got about six months before they're going to do any useful hunting. Now we've got a mother stalking the youngster. This is classic stuff. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, it's beautiful. And he's, there is a sp seemingly a spider's web now and again keeps popping onto the lens. And that's just because there are lots of spiders uh, floating around in the air. This is just great stuff. This is why you have to find lions early in the morning. Hello, John. You're wondering about their uh, in utero existence as lions and whether they are fed by an umbilical cord. Yes, absolutely there are, John. They are mammals and all mammals uh, that are placental mammals. That's, the, I think, the definition of a placental mammal. So, in other words, if they're not an egg-laying platypus or a... Um, a marsupial like a kangaroo uh, the rest all the other mammals will feed their youngsters through the medium of an umbilical cord so yes they have an umbilical cord obviously not anymore but uh, in utero all placental mammals will be fed by a placenta which is the uh, well eventually becomes the afterbirth but baby it's ma basically it's the lining of the uterus I suppose and that is attached to the embryo and the fetus by, well not the embryo, but by the, to the fetus by the umbilical cord. Lynn, as far as we know, yes, absolutely, you say are all the cubs fathered by the Birminghams as far as we know, that is the case, yes. Now, if you are a new viewer, and it, I would be very pleased to know if you were a new viewer, the Birminghams are the dominant male coalition in this area. They are known as the Birmingham Boys, named for a, uh, well, a, basically a group of gangsters. And they were born on the farm Birmingham, which is not too far from here. And because they were born on the farm Birmingham, they're now known as the Birmingham Boys, and there are four of them, and they are the dominant male coalition of this particular region. And they took over this area in the winter of 2015, late 2015, and when they did that, they became, uh, well, I mean, they chased out the other males, and they mated with the females here. And so the chances of these cubs being the offspring of any other lions other than the Birmingham boys, very, very small indeed. So almost certainly they will be the offspring of the Birmingham boys. Now, Peter, you're asking about basically infanticide, and you're saying that the um, you're saying what, at what stage will they be safe for being killed by a marauding band of new males? So, just a quick background: new males that come into an area and chase out other males will kill the cubs of the current prides in the territory that they take over. And it's normally relatively safe from about a year, but often not safe until they're about 18 months to two years old. So 
they're not out of the woods yet, these chaps. But, the, you know, the Birminghams are so dominant, we've had no sign of any other male coalition coming into this area. So I think these little cubs are going to be just fine. I mean, little. Little is uh, the wrong term to use these days. They are now not small at all. <laughs> And that is the proverbial carpet of lions that you can see there. I don't think they're going to move very much from here during the course of the day. Hex Ranga, you said it's feeling a little bit like maternal Monday. It is rather, isn't it? Beautiful hyena youngsters. Now we have the Inkahuma pride, and it's quite possible that they will shortly be joined and by shortly I mean sort of in five or six weeks, by a new set of cubs, birthed perhaps to amber eyes. So yes, Maternal Mondays, it is. I think that would be quite a nice tradition, actually, Maternal Mondays. Well, some of you are still on Tuesday, aren't you? If you're on the far west coast of the United States, I imagine you must hardly be on Monday. You must still at least, you must ha still be on Sunday. You're still having a weekend. The rest of us slaving away on a Monday morning here. Alrighty, I think Jamie's got an update on her tracking expedition. Let's head across to her now. I do. It's not a good update, I'm afraid. Those are beautifully, beautifully fresh leopard tracks, and they're going south into Little Gowrie. And I'm just going to hop out 